Good morning, everyone. It is yet another gorgeous day in Taromina. Bright sunshine, it is hot out here. And today is gonna be a really exciting day and travel vlog. I'm going to, I think, three different wineries around Mount Etna. I have no idea what to expect. I booked this tour through Etna People. I paid for it myself, um, but get this, I did actually get a 10% off discount by booking the tour with Etna People because I booked my car transfer with uh, Sicily by day because as they said, they are quote unquote brother and sister companies. So now I'm just at the hotel lobby waiting for my car to arrive and I don't know who else is gonna be on the tour, um, but I'm really excited. So let's go have a fun day together. <laughs> Our day started when I met my uh, tour guide, Roberto, from uh, Etna People. That's who I booked the tour through. And I, Roberto came with the car directly to my hotel. And what Etna People does is they either pick a common meeting point or they come directly to your hotel depending on where all the participants are located. And in my group, there were six of us in total. And it is actually kind of hilarious. I never expected to come to Sicily and meet so many people living in the UK, but I guess welcome to post-COVID life and travel corridor air bridges. Hopped in the van with oh so charming Roberto, who is such a gem, um, really loved meeting him. And Roberto t took us to a really historic um, town, Castiglione. Uh, di Sicily, um, but Castiglione. So we left Taramina and then we start driving towards Mount Etna and then we start going up and you see all of these great kind of views of Mount Etna. We go through this really amazing little town called, I think it was like called Leguan. I'm gonna put it down below. Um, but we went through kind of a really kind of old historic town. Um, and just the kind of the old homes, the towns that you see, really, really beautiful on the drive kind of up towards uh, kind of Mount Etna and the Mount Etna wineries. And then we kind of, as you kind of go up and then you kind of snake down and around, you get to Castiglione and oh my gosh, so the, what's so special about this town is it's an incredibly well-preserved historic town. It's it's when you kind of drive towards it, it's one of those that was like perched high up on kind of a, a hilltop and the whole town is kind of carved around it. And when you, when we parked, we immediately felt like we were stepping back in time. And what's really interesting is, you know, I think maybe we saw one or two other tourists there. There's really no tourists here. And Side, it will be there, during the night the saint will pass and will bless the water. Oh. Mm. Here, now we are going to see. Okay, remember, we are in Sicily, so we'll see today many churches. Yes. <laughs> this is one of them. This is very, very important. It's the church of the Holy Mary of the Chain. Ah. Now, you can find the church of the Holy Mary of the Chain. One is here, one is in Palermo. That's it. The Holy Mary of the Chains is the protector of the innocent people. Legend says that here there was a band of bandits mm. and the guards, they caught the coat 
free people, the surroundings, free farmers, thinking that they were bandits. Mm. They um, put them in chain and they brought them from here to Palermo. Oh. In Palermo they arrived in the church that after this moment was called Holy Mary of the Chain, or better, was just a chapel, then became a church. And they, the free farmers, they prayed the Holy Mary to liberate them. And the miracle, there was the miracle, so the, the chains, they opened and they were free oh. to go. And just a few days later, everyone realized, or the guards, or better, yeah, the guards realized that they were innocent. Oh. So. We also made our way up towards like the uh, the castle, kind of all the way up on the top. Um, we don't we didn't go into the castle due to time constraints, but we then um, saw all of the panoramic views from there, uh, which uh, just so 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 breathtaking. I'm almost speechless just thinking about how stunning and how gorgeous the town is and all the while hearing some really lovely stories from Roberto, which was so special. So then after making our way all the way up to the castle, we made our way back down through the town and actually before we hopped in the car, we saw something out of the corner of our eyes. And what was that, you ask? Well, it was actually a goat, a goat named Mateo who has his own Facebook page, which is hilarious. And he's literally like kind of tied up but like perched on this post on a street in the town near the main town parking lot. And we were so perplexed by this saying, why is there just a random goat here? And uh, as Roberto mentioned that they have kind of all the, uh, I think the sheep herding dogs are kind of located in a pen kind of right near where the goat is kind of stationed. The goat is stationed there because the scent of the goat is similar to things the dogs are hunting and or herding. But apparently uh, there's a Facebook page called The Real Mateo and Mateo is now an internet legend. People Photoshop things with him um, and he's, you know, Facebook famous from this little village in Italy. So the more you, the more you learn, <laughs> which was really great. So then we hopped back in the van and we headed to our first winery of the day. Okay, so the first winery we went to of the day is called Pat Patria. And we, um, we pulled in, I think we were the only people there at the winery, which was really cool experience. And I think that's one of the reasons why you do these tours. And I think some people could argue, well, you know, you're just getting kind of taken to places kind of by the tour guides. But I think, you know, had I tried to do this alone, in a car, you know, A, I'd have to research it all and coordinate it, but B, if nobody's at these places, it just feels really lonely to be like doing a wine tasting completely by yourself, um, even if you have to pre-book it and don't just serendipitously drop in. So it just seems like 
one of the reasons why you do these tours is you get to do it with a group. All right, so in uh, Patria, um, or Petria, I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing this wrong. Um, we immediately went into the wine tasting portion of the day. We were, after all that walking and hill climbing and stair climbing, we were ready for some wine and they did not disappoint, let me tell you. So we were first served a sparkling wine. So you might think of Prosecco when you think of kind of Italian sparkling wines, but it's actually, uh, what is it, Spumanto um, is also kind of what it's called. So we had a sparkling wine to start, which was lovely. And then we had a white wine flight and then a red wine flight. And honestly, all of them were great. And at this place, it was lovely how they actually left um, like the full bottles on the table for us. So it was absolutely the place where you could indulge a little bit more. And they had uh, olives and fresh bread and really amazing olive oil for us to enjoy. And the olive oil was so fragrant and fantastic. And we just, our, we had such a great group. So there was a lot of kind of wine education happening as part of this tasting, but then the group really bonded so well. So we're all like getting to know each other, kind of laughing, um, telling stories, drinking the wine. So it was just, it was very leisurely. It did not feel rushed at all. And I really, really, really enjoyed that. And then uh, once we kind of had our kind of wine tasting done, we then actually got to go see how the wine was made. And the reason why we went to this winery first is because it's not a typical kind of vineyard with rolling hills with the kind of grape vines. It's actually a place that produces uh, a good amount of the wine that you see coming from Sicily. So they actually kind of took us through the facility. So we started by seeing kind of uh, some of the machines outside and then they took us down these stairs like into this like cave like place which was so cool and they were explaining to us a bit about kind of the volcanic soil from Mount Etna and what that means for the wine production in the area which was really cool and I mean, it just felt a bit otherworldly kind of seeing it kind of some of the, the soil and like the cave-like atmosphere. And then we went into kind of other rooms where they had kind of huge, huge, huge containers um, kind of uh, that are used for fermenting the wine. And then also kind of talked to us a bit about the oak barrels, which are for storing the wine and explained to us that you can actually only use these oak barrels kind of three times before you need to get rid of them because they're no longer good for for the wine. So we really enjoyed kind of just wandering through, listening to our tour guide. And and then after that, we went back out into the bright light of day and went to the storeroom. So if you wanted to buy something, you could. Um, even though I liked the wines, I chose not to buy anything because I only did carry-on luggage and unfortunately like the shipping price back to London is an extra 60 euros on top of what you buy so even though the wines were all so inexpensive I mean the most expensive I think of the things we tasted was a 10 euros for a bottle and the sparkling wine itself was 750 euros so really really affordable um, but if I were staying in Italy longer and I would say like renting a place um, or even staying at my hotel and just wanted to pop open some wine in, in kind of the hotel room. Uh, maybe that's when you book like that sea view kind of hotel room. Not a bad idea. Um, I would have totally bought some more wine, but tomorrow's my kind of last full day and it's just not gonna happen. So yeah, but everyone else there was buying wine. So I think they did well with our tour. Uh, so, so then after that, we went just a few miles down the road to our next and final stop of the day, which is Torre Mora Etna. And oh my gosh, guys, you know, I feel like if, in a way, it's what you'd probably picture if you went to Tuscany because it's like the rolling hills with the vineyards, with the vines, and like the lovely kind of stone farmhouse that is just so epically charming where we had lunch. I mean, 
guys this is stunning i would love to curate a trip with some of my friends and come back and just have that experience at this vineyard it was lovely so lucia who was helping us out for the day at the vineyard was so gracious and so lovely and we had this gorgeous table setting in this old stone stone farmhouse and all the windows were open like the breeze was coming in and we tasted three different types of wines we had a white wine we had a more mild uh, red wine and then like a bolder kind of darker red wine and I have to say, I really genuinely enjoyed all three of these as well. I would say I really liked the white wine and I liked, I like a bolder, kind of full-bodied, uh, spicy red. This one was not spicy, but it was very full-bodied. Actually, the one at the first vineyard was like more spicier kind of finish, um, which I really liked. So, but, so we sat down to this stunning table with these gorgeous plates and gorgeous wine glasses and everything, I mean, it's just magical so we sat down and we had a lovely meal so they first put out like some little starter kind of snacks which included a cheese with this amazing orange marmalade um i mean i wanted to buy that they should have sold that in the store um so that was fantastic and then we had there was a kind of a tomato cheese and onion dish of course I didn't eat the onions, let's be honest. Um, I can't do onions, they give me heartburn, I know. Um, they had olives, they had really amazing bread, they had, um, ooh, what else was on my plate? Uh, I mean, it was all just so, so, so good. What else did we have? Oh, roasted potatoes with rosemary, um, but just absolutely epic. And then the main course was a vegetarian course, which was a kind of a basil, um, I don't know why I'm saying basil, I'm not in the UK, basil, I'm American. <laughs> say, Americans say basil and the Brits say basil, so clearly I'm uh, getting more gentrified there as you do um so a basil uh couscous with tomatoes and cheese and it sounds so simple but oh my gosh the flavors were fantastic and so we got to enjoy our kind of three kind of courses uh like take good uh tastes of wine and had the meal and then after the meal we got a tour of the vineyard so we were like hiking up on there like all the way around through the vineyards and Lucia gave us an incredible tour with lots of knowledge about the vineyard so I'm going to put some footage in here so you can hear some bits from her directly but also just see this gorgeous place <music> You can see the raison. Mm -hmm. In fact, the grape um, became red during the ripeness. Mm. Okay. When the grapes grapes are ready, we start the harvest. Is that we true? are waiting for the harvest. Ah. Okay. Usually, we can start with the white grapes. Mm. In October, we do the harvest of uh, we with the red grapes mm. okay that makes yeah, sense
Wow. These are chestnuts. We put the bottle into the pupitres and turned it for mm -hmm. one year. Yeah. One year. And then that's what yeah. clears it out and then it becomes ready. And is it the one that Maybe in 2022. So wow. you mean it's a Methode Classica? Huh? Yeah, it's a Methode ah. So as you can tell, I was just smitten with this place. I loved the vineyards and, you know, I did make a reference earlier in my chat with you about how it, I, this is how I imagined Tuscany would be. But the difference between Tuscany and Sicily, besides the volcanic uh, soil, is also this vineyard had the most amazing view of Mount Etna as well. So hard to beat that and I just loved the warm kind of Italian hospitality and it was just such a lovely 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 day. So then um, after that we began the ride back in to Taromina and everyone kind of got dropped off at their respective drop-off points. I got dropped back off at my hotel and... <laughs> So um, I was I went out for I was originally kind of getting myself ready for the night, just thinking, oh, I'm gonna go find a nice place for aperitivo, as you do, my favorite tradition. Um, and then uh, one of the girls from the tour texted me and said, hey, you know, we're going out for dinner. Do you want to join us? And I just thought that was so nice because when I travel alone, I just I don't it doesn't bother me. It doesn't phase me. I'm happy to be alone. Uh, it's not a big deal, but I feel like when someone goes out of their way um, who wants to invite you for dinner, I think that's very special and I really bonded with these two uh, on the tour. I mean, I bonded with everyone. Everyone was fabulous, but they reached out and said, hey, you know, we know you're kind of uh, centrally in Taromina. We're going to go to dinner at this place. Do you want to join us? And so sweet. So um, I said, sure, I'll meet you there. And it ended up being like a two minute walk from where my hotel taxi drops us off. And then so we get there and we get there at like, I think like 6.30 or something. And the guy at the restaurant is like, no, 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 we are not open yet, it is too early. <laughs> he just looks at us, he's like, no, too early, too early. So we're all like, well, I mean, in our grand scheme of the day, it's 
dinner time. So I, you know, I looked at them and said, well, you haven't seen Terramina, so why don't we go take a walk and maybe we find some aperitivo for a drink and then we'll come back. Um, or we could go somewhere else to eat. And they said, no, 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 that sounds great. So um, we ended up kind of walking the full length of the Corso Umberto. I didn't film it this time because y'all have seen it in my previous vlog, which I will leave linked down below. Um, so we wandered, we're kind of like trying to decide we want to go for aperitivo, and we ended up back at Cafe Wonder Bar. I mean, I think I just have to accept that Cafe Wonder Bar is my favorite place for aperitivo in Terramina, and own it. We got three more Aperol spritzes the size of our heads, and we got some really great aperitivo snacks, and we got even more snacks because I was with more people and not by myself, so winning. Um, and we just had a great time. Uh, they had live music on at Cafe Wonder Bar, which is great. They had it the night before as well, but they usually have like really good live music, so that was fun. Um, we watched kind of the sunset over the piazza and um, just lovely, lovely, lovely vibes as it got dark. And then uh, we paid our bill uh, at about 7.30 made the seven minute walk back to uh, the place we wanted to go for uh, dinner, which was called Tiramisu, uh, or Restaurante Tiramisu, I forget. I'll leave it linked down below. Um, and this was actually a recommendation from Roberto, our amazing guide from Etna People. And he said, oh, I really like this place, Tiramisu. So we went there and um, it was really good. We started with uh, bruschetta uh, and uh, FYI, it's not bruschetta, or not bruschetta, bruschetta, <laughs> bruschetta if you're in Boston. Um, our our uh, server was teaching us uh, Italian in between each course. He's like, bruschetta, not br bruschetta. <laughs> he was so animated. I didn't want to film him, but he's also wearing a mask that was the Italian flag, so and all the servers were, it was very cute. Um, and then we decided, because there were three of us, we decided to do three different pizzas and share them all. So we got, um, I forget what one of them was, one had like some sort of meat and tomato and uh, ricotta. And then one was like a seafood pasta with uh, shrimp and uh, arugula, which is rocket in the UK, um, some sort of cheese. That one was actually really fantastic. Like the flavors in that one were really good. And then the other one, um, because y'all know I can't have the day without having something pistachio, we got this uh, like pistachio with some sort of like creamy cheese with tomatoes and some smoked ham, not prosciutto, but smoked ham. And that one didn't look like that much aesthetically pleasing, but was all of our favorite. <laughs> See, you come to Terramina, you have to eat all the, the all the uh, pistachio things. So highly encourage that. So just such a great way to end the evening. We had a great bottle of red wine shared between us. And then unfortunately I had to dash out because I had to meet my kind of driver at 9.15, which was like, just as they were putting down like complimentary tiramisu on the table for us, which of course I had a bite before I left and was fantastic. You can't name your restaurant tiramisu without having good tiramisu. So I don't think I got a picture of it though because I was rushed, but really would recommend this. It's a little off the tourist track of um, Taromina. Um, and because of that, it's like very chill and low key inside. Um, it's not like the big buzzy kind of vibe, but really, really, really good food. And if you don't want to be like crowded in with people, I think would be such a great spot to try. So, oh my gosh, guys, with that said, that wraps up my day in Taromina. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the kind of wine adventures of Mount Etna. I only want to experience that more. I mean, there's literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of wineries around Mount Etna. So, I barely scratched the surface, guys. So if you know of good ones, um, or if you know of other great things to do in and around Terramina, please leave a comment below. This channel is all about helping travelers kind of plan and take amazing trips. And um, yeah, if you like this content, please hit that like button. Um, and please also consider subscribing to this channel as well. I would love to have you kind of as one of my subscribers and get to see all of my amazing 
um, travel adventures. There's so many more great ones to come. So thanks again for tuning in guys and I will see you soon.